Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video we're going to be looking at the new Gadget Academia 2022. Welcome, Coffee Kev. Please enjoy. So this is Gaja's flagship bean to cup machine. The original version was the most advanced in the Gaja range, but one of the really impressive things about it is it's built to withstand some serious use and abuse. I would hope that the new version will be as good in that regard, only time will tell I suppose, but the new edition does seem to have a heck of a lot going for it. It has a pro steam wand on a ball joint in addition to the one touch milk carafe with multiple froth density settings, customizable for each drink, and it automatically cleans the steam path each time you remove the carafe with the steam hygiene cycle. It has a coffee boost function that I think should have been called Turbo Boost, which adds a ristretto to any coffee. And for those who don't know what a ristretto is, it's a name for a short espresso ratio, which is normally about one to one. For example, 18 grams of ground coffee to 18 grams of espresso or ristretto. It has five dose settings from seven to 11 grams, and it does a true double shot just by selecting the two cup option, meaning that you can easily make a double shot with 14 to 22 grams of coffee. It grinds and pulls twice, so really you're getting two single shots in quick succession, but it's the same difference. It offers 19 one-touch drink options, including some quite unique drinks for a bean to cup machine, such as Melange, Macchiatoni, Coffee Ole, and Cortado. It'll also deliver hot water for black tea at 90 degrees Celsius and hot water for green tea slightly cooler at 85 degrees Celsius. It has four customizable profiles, brew temperature control, heated cup warmer. It's made in Italy, it has a real glass front and it has a red stripe for better tasting coffee, obviously. I've used this for a few days leading up to creating this video and I have to say I'm really impressed with this machine. There are a few niggles which you'll get to later, but overall this is a very capable machine. In fact, where true bean to cup coffee machines are concerned, meaning machines with a brewing unit, not portafilter machines, so far, this is the most impressive bean to cup machine I've ever used when it comes to the more premium options. There's no point comparing a machine like this to a simple bean to cup machine like the Gaja Brera or the Longi Magnifica, but when we compare it to the other more expensive machines on the market, the Academia gives you a lot more for your money than bells and whistles. Usually when you're spending this kind of money on a domestic bean to cup coffee machine, you're not really investing in better cup quality. You're mainly just investing in flashier features. Most machines from the same brand, from the cheapest to the most expensive, have the same grinder and brewing unit. And there's often literally no difference in espresso quality from the cheapest to the most expensive in the range. With the Academia, you're investing in a machine that gives you control over the brew temperature, control over the espresso flow rate, control over the dose, and a machine that gives you ultimate control over milk texture and temperature too, with the Pro Steam Wand. But it combines this with a very user-friendly touchscreen interface with four user profiles. So if you're more nerdy about your coffee, you can use it in geek mode. That's not actually the name of a mode, but it should be. And everyone else using this machine can simply swipe to find a pretty looking image of a flat white cafe latte or whatever they fancy. Will it deliver the same cup quality that someone using it in geek mode might get from using a traditional portafilter espresso machine? No, it's a bean to cup coffee machine, but I think home baristas who are forced into using a bean to cup machine at home will be happier than this machine than with most other options. Here's a few things I really like about this machine. As I've already said, the versatility when it comes to the types of coffee drinkers who will be able to use this machine. The huge number of coffee options available, the ability to modify everything either on the fly or in advance, and in both cases, the ability to save these changes to any profile. The advanced espresso settings, including being able to adjust the flow rate, pre-infusion and brew temperature, the Steam Wand is great, it's very similar to using the Pro Steam Wands on the Sage or Breville machines, for example. Consistent power, but not too aggressive, so it's forgiving for learning to properly texture milk with. The One Touch Milk Frothing is fairly impressive too. You have three texture settings and three temperature settings for each drink, and I think at the hottest setting, the temperature is perfect. If you're someone who likes scalding hot milkies, however, you'll probably never get that from a One Touch machine. 
but you can use a steam one to create whatever milk temperature you like. The one touch flat white this will produce is the closest thing to a flat white I've had from a one touch machine. You can get the intensity spot on and then save it to your profile and at the lowest froth option the texture is really close to the perfect flat white texture. It has a proper heated cup warmer with a programmable auto on time so you can set it to turn on to heat up your cups each morning, that's impressive. The automatic cleaning it does is great and the simplicity of being able to just click on the clean set icon to go into the cleaning cycles and access all of the machine settings. And I really like the touch screen, it feels really responsive. I've not had the same kind of frustration that I usually experience when using touch screen machines. The user profiles are really intuitive. If you choose a user profile and select that colour each time you come to the machine, you'll automatically find your favourites on the screen. So for example, if you usually only make one or two coffees, you'll only see them on your home screen when you select your profile. That's clever. There are a few things that I think they could have done better. The biggest one for me is the drip tray capacity. When I've been testing it, it's been prompting me to open the machine and empty the drip tray about every five or six coffees, which is a bit annoying. I do think Gadget have dropped a clanger here. They've given up space that could have been used for the drip tray to give more space for the grounds bin. So the bin takes 16 used coffees. But because of the size of the drip tray, I found during testing that I've been prompted to open the machine and empty the drip tray by every five or six coffees, as I've said. And this involves removing the grounds bin. So what's the point of that? Surely they should have split the difference, used all the bottom part of the tray for the water, and then reduced the bin capacity to maybe 10 coffees. I'm told there is gonna be a bypass extension stand, which will enable you to extend the drip tray size. But when you're spending this kind of money, you wouldn't really expect to have to buy something like that just to give you the size of the drip tray you'd expect on a machine like this. The volume settings for espresso, I think could do with being tweaked. The minimum volume for espresso is 30 mil, and the maximum dose is around 11 grams. So that means that technically speaking, the espresso this produces is Lungo, a one to three ratio shot. This isn't a big deal. If you want a more standard one to two ratio espresso, you can simply select ristretto as that gives you a minimum of 15 mil volume. This is fairly normal for bean to cup machines, but with the advanced features on this machine, I'm surprised they've not given a lower minimum volume on the espresso setting. Like I say though, it's no big deal, just use the ristretto setting instead. I like the fact that you can toggle through the drink options with a dial, but it seems to jump quite a lot. It can be tricky to select the drink you want while using the dial. I find the touch screen much easier to use for that. The last little niggle is that while I really like the fact that there's a quick access purge option for the Steam Wand, there's no quick access for the Steam Wand itself. You have to swipe your way through all of the coffee options to get to the Steam. That would annoy me if I was using this every day. I think the purge icon on the screen should be the steam icon and it should be programmed so that it toggles intermittently between purge and steam. So touch it once to purge and touch it again to steam and when you finish steaming you touch it a third time to purge again. They've done so many clever things with this machine I'm sure they could do that and that for me would make this so much nicer to use when it comes to manually steaming milk. So in conclusion, and maybe a note to Gaja here, I think this is very close to being the perfect bean to cup coffee machine. Just a few niggles that would lead to losing a point or so if it was marking it out of 10. But who knows, maybe they'll tweak these as I'd imagine most of these could just be fixed with firmware updates. I've had some really nice coffees from the Academia over the past few days. I think when you're using it in what I call geek mode, this machine is hard to beat where cup quality is concerned. And I think most normal coffee drinkers will really enjoy using it in one touch mode. Just to answer the inevitable question, how does this compare to the Sage or Breville Oracle? In my opinion, it doesn't. They're completely different machines. The Oracle and Oracle Touch are porter filter machines. They're not brewing unit machines, so they're not true bean to cup coffee machines. The Academia is for people who want or need to use true bean to cup coffee machines. For example, if you'd be happy with a porter filter machine, but others using the machine, they're expecting more of a vending machine experience, this will be a better choice. But if the other people using the machine don't want to geek out, but are happy to go through the motions of using a porter filter, then the Oracle or Oracle Touch may be the better choice for better cup quality with just a little bit more user interaction. When it comes to comparing this with most other bean to cup coffee machines on the market though, I don't know of any other bean to cup machine that gives as much manual control as this does. It should be just as much a reliable workhorse as the original Academia from what I can tell, so I do think it's a very difficult machine to beat if you're comparing with other bean to cup machines. 
I'll put options in the description for getting hold of one of these if you decide it's a machine for you, including a discount code for £100 off in the UK at the time of speaking. Firefighters use very wet water to put out fires, which has nothing to do with clicking the like button. Like. Click the like button if you had no idea that there was such a thing as wetter water. Thank you very much for watching, and if you love coffee and enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista. We've got reviews and how-tos on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click on my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.